Today in Crazy Performance Repair, we're gonna be going ahead and replacing a CV axle in the C6 Corvette. All right, so this Corvette is basically your typical Corvette repair as far as a CV axle goes, but this particular car is one of these supercharged cars that you will see frequently on my channel where it has several modifications done making well north of 800 horsepower i, I have several of them that make between 800 and a thousand horse and uh, this is one of those cars at the wheel of course and we're going to go ahead and put this axle in today so this is a used axle yes but uh, he has a noise concern with this car so the noise concern that we have is a clicking sound under load specifically but you can't hear it unless the RPMs are low. And the only reason you can't hear it unless the RPMs are low is because of how loud the car is. So what I had to do is I had to drive around quite a ways in order to justify where the noise is coming from. Now there's two possibilities for the, where the noise is coming from. It's only speed related as far as how fast the car goes. So, so vehicle speed related, which means it's either the CV axle, the differential or the transmission. And if it was the transmission, it would probably change, depending on what year I would be in, it would change the pitch of the sound. It does not change the pitch of the sound. The pitch of the sound is the same no matter what gear I'm in. It just changes with speed only. And it's kind of a, a thudding, clicking sound and you can feel it in the shifter. Uh, the only reason we're just putting an axle in this car first before I go condemning the differential is because this one has a leaking axle anyway. So there's a leak out of the CV boot. It got damaged during some previous repair at a previous shop where it started leaking out. And so the guy's been cleaning his wheel uh, constantly just to keep the grease away. And now that it's making noise, uh, the car is making noise, we're gonna go ahead and put this in just in case that's the noise and since he needs it anyway. So let's go ahead and get the wheel off and get started. So when it comes to replacing CV axles, it doesn't matter whether it's front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, whatever if it's got a cv axle it's going to be independent suspension and you still have to approach the project exactly the same no matter what vehicle it is uh, as far as trying to figure out how to get it out of there now some very few vehicles have some very unique cv axle situations uh, chevy pickups for instance for a while they had this goofy cap and this little bitty bolt in it uh, and i don't know why they did that but whatever it's just the way they did it uh, so I think that was Chevy, or is that Ford? I don't know, I just remember it was a while ago, last one I did, and there's a couple of them. This car has the typical style with the very large nut that you wanna make sure you torque down properly because that sets the bearing preload on the bearings in most cars. So you wanna make sure you get that torque properly uh, when you go to assemble it. But we have to find an approach at getting this thing out of here. So I'm gonna take a quick look. All right, so I'm doing a little evaluating here and the best approach I have is this top ball joint. I'm gonna take it out as far as the bolt that holds it to this control arm. Um, I'm probably gonna to have to, well, actually, I might end up doing the top there. I'm not gonna be able to pull it down. Yeah, I can't pry this down any further. Well, I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna try the ball joint. We're gonna see how it goes, but I don't need to pull this axle out very far to get it past this distance. So because I don't have to go very far, all I'm gonna try and do is tilt this just enough to get it past there and then I can slide that aside towards the back. There's enough room in the back, it looks like. And then I can take this part here and slide it out that way and then pull the axle out. So that's theor theoretically what I'm gonna do, but I'm seeing how this control arm is close to the shock. I may have to pull the shock, I don't know. It's just a matter of trying it and seeing what I come up with. All right, as I was gathering my tools and doing a little more analysis, I am gonna take this tie rod end off and I'm gonna do the control arm up at the top bolts. That way I can slide the whole assembly out. And then most likely I'll have to do those shock bolts as well because I don't think this axle is gonna go far enough that direction unless I can tilt the knuckle that way. But I'm gonna save those two bolts for last and see what happens. So I just tried prying it. There is nothing decent to pry on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this pry bar up there like I did before, only flip it around. And on the other end, which you guys can't see right now, I'm gonna go ahead and tap it with a rubber mallet to use this pry bar kind of like a punch. There. Now you see how that moved? 
What that's doing is releasing the clip that's in there. So there we go. Now I'm ready to pull it out. So now I notice this is stretched out a little bit, which I do not do not like. But if I turn this guy, then we have enough room minus this parking brake cable issue, which is a cheap piece of junk because it's been abused too many times. So let's see here. What can I do about that parking brake? I mean, I could let it come out like that. It's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it properly here. It's about my only real option. There we go. Okay, so I got that disconnected. Now I got this pulled back quite a ways, so I can take this axle and pull it out of the differential. That was way too loose. It barely took any effort to get that to start to spin, so if somebody did not torque that down, Little history on this Corvette. I do have some videos on it previously called Disaster Vet. I don't know if I still have them on my channel, but if you find them, uh, they were long because they were my literally my first videos, but there is a lot of crazy going on on this car when I got it in the shop. So if you feel intrigued to go check those out, feel free. Otherwise, I'm just gonna get this axle out. Huh, got myself a little owie, I'm bleeding. Imagine that. So you can see whoever was messing with this, they tried, looks like they put some kind of piece of rubber here and then they hose clamped it to try and get it to seal. That's kind of jank. Oh well. All right, so since we have a noise concern with this car, I'm gonna go ahead and give this axle a little bit of movement. That way I can see if I feel anything obvious. I definitely feel some interesting uh, grinding, thunking kind of a feel. As, as I'm going, I can feel it thunk, thunk, thunk. And then it kind of does that dunk, dunk, dunk again. So, hey, there's no way I'm going to show you guys that. But you're just going to have to take my word for it. Right in this bottom section here, I feel something very unusual. So there's definitely a roller with an issue inside that CV axle. Maybe if I get ambitious, I'll go ahead and pull it apart uh, at the end of the video here. But we'll have to wait and see. All right, time to put the other axle in. Actually, you know what? I'm going to compare them. Because you should always compare them. Especially since that's a used axle. Of course, make sure the length is right. That looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one as well. It is used, so I'd probably better check it, huh? I can feel a little bit of the same thing in this one, but it's not near as aggressive as what that one is doing. I suppose that's just because it's dried out. All right, axle going in. Install is obviously going to be exactly the reverse of removal. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do here. There we go. That's in. Both sides are in. I'm going to go ahead and zip this nut on there loosely. Okay, so I started impacting because of the self-locking part of it. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go until it contacts and then just back off a real small amount. Okay. Now we're going to reassemble everything and then I will be torquing that down to actual spec once it's all assembled. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. All right, so I'm just making sure I didn't forget anything. I think I got everything on there. We didn't lose any fluid, which is surprising. All right, so I'm point to the point of ready to torque this thing down. And all I do is I take a pry bar and a torque wrench and just go like this. And I make sure I click it twice to make sure it's good to go. That's how I torque it. Now, as far as getting the torque spec for your own vehicle, you might want to look into uh, SKF bearing torque specification. They have a PDF on it. Now, I tried doing that for this one, and for some reason I couldn't find it. I don't know if my phone is being goofy. I found one, I clicked on it, and it just went away. It said it could not load. Uh, I've done that for years where I used the SKF bearing torque PDF and for some reason it's not working right now. It may or may not work for you, just hit hit the Google search or hit whatever search engine you're using, search for SKF bearing torque, and when you see the little PDF thing, go ahead and click on that, and then you should be able to get pretty much any torque spec for any axle that you want for a wheel bearing torque. So that is complete. I'm gonna get the wheel back on, take this thing for a test drive, and hopefully 
I'm going to go ahead and do the CV axle pulling it apart. But uh, I'll have to wait and see. Depends on how ambitious I am after the test drive. I may have to do a differential on this thing, so. Yeah. All right, so we're about to take this car on a test drive. Be sure to hit a thumbs up and leave a comment below if you guys would like to see more test drives of cars like this one. As you can hear... This thing's got a little bit of supercharger noise going on, so let's go ahead and take this for a drive. Hopefully the sound is gone and I can give it a little bit of snort, but I won't be able to really pin this car because we have other things to work out with it. So let's go ahead and see if it still makes noise and go for a drive. This thing needs two more. so we'll give you guys a lesson. It's definitely the differential then because there's nothing else it can be. Roll up the windows. Just in case there's a little too much wind noise, we're going to roll up the windows for you. So I don't know if you guys can hear it yet, but I'll give it a little bit more here in a second. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, I hope to see you on another video. Thanks for watching.